would like to thank my viewer Mark Taylor for pointing out that in my pear tree that I might have had fire blight. So you don't see it because he suggested to me that I cut the branch off that had the dead looking pears and they're, these are Asian pears, Shinseki pear as you can see and it had a branch that had black fruit and that died off and the branch itself was dark in color as opposed to these healthy colored branch and he said it could be fire blight and to cut it down to the to the end which I did so thank you for the suggestion and I should have cut it off in the first place I had thought of it when I was filming but what I did was I didn't cut them out cut it out because as I was filming I forgot about it and day after day it could be there and when he said that I was like yeah I mean obviously you want to cut dead things off of trees so that they don't pull nutrients away from the main plant and secondarily um yeah I didn't think that it would be a disease and it could have it could have been so I threw away the branch and I'm hoping it's not fire blight and I looked up you know what fire blight is and it's a bacterial disease and so you'd have to put like sulfur or copper on it there's a spray and I'm hoping that it's not that and as you can see here this branch is weird it's doing a up and down sort of thing so sometime in the winter I'm gonna have to cut it right there and kind of trim this tree better because there's this branch that's going inwards towards itself and you don't want that you want it to go up and outwards um, like a V not an upside down V and so I'm going to clear out the spaces between the branches and especially I don't know why this apricot must be in its its best place it's loving life because it is growing so well it's like now eight feet tall or so eight and a half feet tall and the other plants near it aren't nearly doing as great but same thing with the pineapple guava um however the pineapple guava is the oldest one that's been put into the ground so it may, it's understandable that this one um is so large but i guess this must be the perfect spot for plants the amount of sun that they get but like I said earlier it was good design because these two tall plants tall trees help to shade out this side of the garden at certain times and then as the Sun moves then and it'll shade out the other side so you know half half the time it shades one side and half the time it shades the other side and also I have a lemon tree a large mature lemon tree over there and sorry about the glare and it shades over top on some of the plants so I'm kind of protecting the plants from the hot sun that Southern California has and so by putting it into these niches um, and also putting them together they're helping each other especially during the winter but in the summer they may need some space otherwise you'll have like lots of insects so I may or may not move them over there's an area that looks really embarrassingly ugly it was ugly because it was designed this way I had some crabgrass and I grew some blackberries from these bushes and they came down touched down on the ground and they spread and I didn't like getting into there to weed it because it was thorny so it was a mess so we finally took care of it my husband and I and we um, pulled up a lot of the things and we poured some chicken manure over here from the chicken run and then we watered it down and then we took all these cardboard papers from Costco um, they're for free they're found between like the toilet paper roll packages and stuff like that so uh, it's just to divide the levels of uh, toilet paper so we just li lined it down here laid it down and we're just smothering the weeds as much as we can and it's doing a great job I 
held it down with some potted plants and stuff like that and over time we'll add soil over here and then we'll move the fruit trees make holes in this uh, cardboard make holes in this cardboard and put some plants into the ground in these areas some fruit trees so this this area will be filled out with fruit trees and so this is part this is the other half of the food forest or the other quarter part actually because I'll show you so that's one quarter the other quarter and then this quarter of the food forest and then the rest are going to be potager garden maybe food forest and then I have another corner that's going to be for sure potager garden and of course the coop so I really really wanted to say thank you thank you very much for the suggestion to cut off that branch because I didn't think of it as a disease issue I just looked at it in terms of it might have burned because I because it got too cold in the winter or that uh, I had thrown some um, worm tea that I didn't water down in this area but it makes sense that it could be fire blight because it only affected one branch now I'm hoping that it didn't spread because it was on there for a long time before I noticed his comment so um, thank you very much if you're watching this video folks I wanted to share with you um, today a quick little video on nutritious foods so um, you know about quick um, quick oats in the morning or uh, the night before you take some oatmeal oats and put some your favored milk almond milk or whatnot and you put fruit and other ingredients in there and uh, mix it up and put it into the fridge and eat it the next morning as your breakfast. Well, here's another way that's nutritious. If you take any cereal of your choice, and by the way, this is a new cereal that we found at Costco, Cheerios Oat Crunch with cinnamon. Now, the sugar is a little bit lower, but I guess you have to compare the, the amount um, of sugar per like half cup or whatever it is so I just take a small amount of cereal you could also just use oats and stuff and I doll it up so I take a very small amount of the cereal and I add sesame seeds flax seeds if you have it I have chia seeds back here and I put some peanut peanuts on it but if you're allergic to peanuts, you can try other, other nuts like sunflower seeds or whatnot. And um, also slivered almonds or sliced almonds, those are wonderful. They just, they just go with the milk so much and with the, with the seeds and nuts. And there you have a very, f and I add coconut flakes and it's very filling high in protein and then you want to decrease your carbs and so that doesn't give you a, a huge spike in your sugar levels and it's delicious and you could do it really quick too it doesn't have to be as cold it doesn't have to be cold like the overnight oats which have to be refrigerated um, which uh, that's good for the summertime, but in the winter when it's cold, I like to have hot stuff to have. And at least this is hot or room temperature. But regardless, they're both good. And you could add fruit, add fruit to it. So, you know, bananas, r raspberries, strawberries, stuff like that. And then um, just make a cereal that's dolled up with other ingredients and so it ends up being healthier for you. So give it a try and tell me what you think and if you love it and what other hacks or tricks that you have for your breakfasts. Have a great day.
So I have here a used jar or an empty jar from my uh, strawberry jelly that we got from Costco. It's this brand, Bon Maman. And I love this jar. It looks so pretty. I love the way the lid is and as well as the shape of the jar. And we cleaned it out and the, I had recently harvested some goji canes and wash the canes and I use some of the leaves um, in my pasta. I just put a few leaves at a time just to get more greens in our body and I recently ate just a few goji berries but there are a ton of leaves that you can get from all the canes and the canes are about six feet tall so as you can imagine it doesn't seem like a lot of leaves but once you gather them um, this is just from about five canes or four canes. So what I'm doing is, and the canes were only about a foot long or so. So what I'm going to do is, I've had it drying kind of in the air, air drying for about a day and a half. And I don't want these to go to waste. Some of it I've put into a, a mug and I'm going to make tea with it. Um, like what was in the last video so I'll put um, a chunk of candied ginger the goji canes I mean goji uh, leaves and goji berries and have that as my tea in the meantime I have these that are already washed and plucked off the canes and these goji leaves are gonna go in the freezer I'm gonna see how they do in the freezer um, the outsides of the leaves are dry so they shouldn't stick together and I'm just going to collect a, a ton of them and fill this jar up over time and then I can have um, goji leaf tea in the winter time when the canes are bare because this, the leaves fall off at that by then. So that's a suggestion f and also for when I'm cooking and stuff, I can throw some in as a vegetable. So that's a tip that I love sharing. Have a great day.